Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will continue talking about exponential functions. Uh, the previous lecture was dedicated to basically definitions of what is an exponent is. Uh, well, obviously it's very easy to define for um, natural number as an exponent. So if you have where x is a natural number, then it's just multiplication of a by itself n times. But then I expanded this definition to rational number, zero negative numbers, irrational numbers, basically all based on one very important property of uh, exponent, that if you have two, um, if you have a product of two elements, each one of them is some base and some exponent, then it's equal to this. So the product of exponents is exponent of a sum with the same base, obviously. Now, this is a fundamental property of exponential functions. And all definitions in the previous lecture were based on this. Now, I will go into properties of uh, exponential functions. Um, now, just to illustrate these properties, I would like you to have in mind a graph of this particular function. I will explain all the details about graph in the next lecture. This lecture is about properties, but the graph is based on the property, and that's why I would like you just to keep in mind the, how the general picture actually looks like. So, now, this function is defined for all positive a, and we have to define it in two different categories, a greater than 1 and a less than 1. So for a greater than 1, the graph looks like this. It's increasing from 0 to plus infinity. And in this particular case, it's decreasing. OK. Now, I draw these graphs without basically any kind of a base, any foundation. The foundation is the properties which I'm going to talk about this lecture. And the graph will be more explained in more details in the next lecture. However, it's easy to talk about properties if you have these pictures in mind. Because I have it in my mind, that's why I would like you to have it. For greater than one base, it's increasing. For less than one, it's decreasing. Now, having this picture in mind, now I will go to all the properties. And again, these are the properties which are in the foundation of graphing the function. So that's why it's very important. OK, property number one. Exponential function is always positive. Now, I will try to prove as, you know, as rigorously as possible all these properties. So uh, just bear with me. Now, y a to the power of x is positive. Well, let's consider again the definition, starting from the x natural. So a to the power of n is a times a, etc. a is always a positive number. So if you multiply positive number by positive number, it will be positive number. So for any natural n, it's positive. Now, for negative integer, where n is natural, so it's minus n. This is, by definition, 1 over a to the power of n, inverse. Now, inverse to a positive number is still positive. Inverse to 3 is 1 third. Inverse to a million is 1 millionth, still positive number. So for all integers, positive and negative, um, uh, the a to the power of x is uh, positive. Now, how about rational numbers? Well, again, what is a to the power of p over q, where p and q are two natural numbers? Well, again, by definition, this is the q's root of a to the power of p. 
Now, a to the power of p is positive. Now, q's root also positive. Basically, it's a definition of the root. Root is always positive from the positive number. We are not talking about negative numbers, complex numbers, etc. We are talking about positive numbers, and root of the positive number is always the positive number, which being raised into the q's power will give a to the power of p. And obviously, with the negative rational numbers, where p and q are natural, this is again by definition, and since this is positive, the inverse is also positive. Now, just once I will address the uh, irrational numbers, and then I will not talk about the rational numbers at all, because I cannot really make it absolutely rigorously. So, I was talking about um, exponential function with x being an irrational number as a limit case when we are approximating this irrational number with rational numbers. So if x can be approximated with a sequence of rational numbers, then a to the power x would be a limit of a to the power of all these elements of the sequence. So basically, I, I don't want to go any deeper in this because, again, we are not really on the level where I can make it absolutely rigorously. So just consider the irrational number as a limit case for rational numbers, and that would probably be enough to, um, to talk about, well, the proof that a to the power of x would be always positive regardless of x. Positive x, negative x, anything. How about zero? How about a to the power of zero? Well, this is always one by definition. Again, that's from the previous lecture. And that's basically is based, again, on the main property of of the exponential function. We must have a to the power of 0 equals to uh, 1 to satisfy this. And again, that was addressed in the previous lecture. So if exponent itself is equal to 0, then the exponential function is uh, equal to always 1. OK. How about base? What if base is equal to 0? What happens then? Well, then exponential function is always equal to 1, because 1 to any power would be equal to 1. Uh, proof is exactly the same as I was talking about uh, a to the power of x being positive. First, you check it for natural numbers, which is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So for all natural x is obvious, that's 1. Then negative natural numbers, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. And then rational, etc. It's very, very trivial, so we're not going to address it anymore. Next property. All right. Uh, next property is actually related to these two graphs, which I um, draw before. Um, so basically, it says that if a is greater than 1, then for positive x, y would be greater than 1. And for negative x, y would be less than 1. Again, remember the graph? Well, this is 1. So this is y to the power of, let's say, uh, 2 to the power of x, something like this. Any number base greater than 1. So it's increasing. This is level 1. So if x is equal to 0, function is equal to 1. 2 to the power of 0 as anything else to the power of 0 would be 1. Then function goes above 1 to the right and below 1 to the left. Now let's prove it. Forget about graph. Let's prove it. OK. Proof is, is exactly um, done in the fashion uh, as before. First, well, let's consider this case. So. If x is natural, 
a to the power of n is a times a times a n times. Now, each a is greater than 1, as we are saying. Now, multiplying a greater than 1 number by greater than 1 number results in greater than 1 number. If it's not obvious, let me just prove it to you. <laughs> well, if a is greater than 1, then it's just an interesting exercise. A can be represented as 1 plus d, where d is greater than 0, right? So if a is greater than 1, then d is some number greater than 0. Basically, d is equal to a minus 1, right? Now, therefore, a squared is equal to 1 plus d squared, which is 1 plus 2d plus d squared. Now, d is greater than 1, so we add something to the 1, which means we are getting a number greater than 1. So multiplying a number greater than 1 by itself two times will result in a number even greater than 1. Well, basically this is the way how we can prove that any number of times we are multiplying number by itself, we will get the number greater than 1. Well, the easiest way probably would be something like this. This is greater than 1 plus 2d. Right? Because there is one extra member here. So, now let's go to a to the third degree. We will have 1 plus d to the third degree, which is equal to 1 plus d to the second degree times 1 plus d, which is greater than I replace this with this. Which is equal to 1 plus 3d plus 2d squared, right? Which is greater than 1 plus 3d. So, look at this. a squared greater than 1 plus 2d. a cubed greater than 1 plus 3d. Now, it's very easy to prove, let's say by induction, that greater than 1 plus n times a. Basically, that's enough to prove that it's greater than 1. And the greater n is, the greater this number becomes. So let's just remember this particular inequality. I, I do encourage you to, to prove it by induction. Just check it for n is equal to 1, which is kind of, uh, which is, uh, or n is equal to 2, starting from n equals to 2, which is obvious. And then if it's equal, if it's, uh, if this inequality is true for, for some number, n is equal to k, try to go to k plus 1. Do it yourself, it's very easy, and we will use it in some other place. But what it proves for us right now is that if a is greater than 1, then for all natural numbers, which are integer positive, a to the power of n would be greater than 1. We see it from here. How about negative uh, natural numbers? What if we are talking about this? Well, since this is equal to this, this is greater, denominator is greater than 1, so the inverse to a number which is greater than 1 is smaller than 1. So we get this one. All right, so we have uh, proved it for all integer numbers. How about rational? Quite frankly, it's exactly the same thing. Let's again start with this. If you have a to the power of p over q, which is, by definition, a q's root of a to the power of p, now, this we have already proven that, in this case, this is positive. Uh, this is greater than 1, sorry. Um, positive, obviously, uh, uh, as well. Now, um, if you have a q's root from a number which is greater than 1, you must have the result which is greater than 1. Why? Otherwise, if it's less than 1, and then you will raise it into the power of q, 
every time you multiply it by itself, it will be smaller and smaller and smaller because uh, you assume that the number is less than one. So it cannot be greater than one in this particular case. So that's obvious trick. Similarly, with negative rational numbers, since this is greater than one, then negative should be correspondingly inverse to a number which is greater than one, that is a smaller than one number. So I proved it for all rational numbers, and uh, I told you I will not talk about irrational numbers, but let me just say it again, that irrational numbers are limit case of rational, so whatever the rational numbers, inequalities uh, are, are true for, ratio, for irrational numbers will, will always be true. Okay, now, very similar. What if A is less than 1? Well, then I'm saying that for positive x, y would be less than 1, and for negative x, it would be greater than 1. Well, I can prove it directly in exactly the same or similar fashion that I did it for A greater than 1, but let me do it slightly differently. Look at this. Um, A to the power of x is equal to 1 over A to the power of minus x. That's obvious, right? Because what is minus x? Minus x means 1 over 1 over a to the power of x, right? Which is a to the power of x. <coughs> now, having done that, I can basically refer everything to an opposite case. Because if a is, greater, it is less than 1, then 1 over a is greater than 1, right? So this to the power of x would be uh, greater than 1 for x positive and would be less than 1 for x negative, right? So for a, it would be vice versa, since this is equal to, so one, uh, uh, since 1 over a to the power of x is greater than 1, then a to the power of x should be less than 1 for positive x. And if 1 over a over x uh, is less than 1 for a negative, then y over x should be greater than 1 for negative x. So that's basically kind of a easy logic which will reduce these cases to these cases. Just change the sign of the exponent. So back to our graph, again, remember, for a greater than 1, it goes this way. For a less than 1, it goes this way. Now, it looks like it's monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. So let's prove it, right? Why do I have, you know, such a nice and smooth curve? Let's prove the monotonicity. Is there such a word, monotonicity? I don't know, maybe. So let's prove that the, that the functions are monotonic for any a. For a greater than 1, it's monotonically increasing. For a less than 1, it's monotonically decreasing. All right, so let's consider this case. <coughs> now, let's, uh, now, what is monotonically increasing? It means if we are increasing um, an argument, then the function is also increasing. That's what monotonic increase means. All right, fine. So let's just take two different arguments, and we start with integer uh, arguments, positive integer number, numbers. So let's say m less than n. So I will prove that if this is true, then a to the power of m would be less than a to the power of n. How can I prove that? Well, very easily. Since m is less than n, then m is equal to n uh, minus uh, 
n minus n. Right? Right. Or if you wish, n is equal to m plus n minus n. Same thing. So I will use this actually. Now, a to the power of n, this one, therefore is equal to the a power to the power of m plus m n minus m. Equals. Now, you remember that whenever we are adding exponents, it means we can multiply exponential functions. <coughs> now, a is greater than 1, right? So, this, considering that n minus m is greater than 0, this is greater than 1, right? It's base, which is greater than 1, to the positive exponent, positive power. The result is, based on whatever we were just talking before that, greater than 1. Since it's greater than 1, <coughs> then this number, a to the power of n, <coughs> excuse me, is greater than a to the power of m, since this multiplier is greater than 1. So, we have proven that with increasing exponent, we increase the exponential function value as well for greater than one base. So, basically, it's really looking like the curve goes up, but only for integer numbers. Now, how can we expand it to, let's say, rational numbers? Well, it's really very, very simple. Let's say we have two different rational numbers, p over q, which is less than r over s. I have to prove that a to the power of p over q is less than a to the power of r over s. Now, how can I prove that? Well, um, let me first bring these two rational numbers to common denominator. It doesn't change the numbers themselves, so Let's say I will use common denominator QS. So one would be PS uh, over QS less than uh, RQ over QS, right? So these are exactly the same. But now, oh, I'm sorry, QS. But now I have an advantage of having common denominator. So it's easier for me to consider the same kind of a theorem uh, only for cases of common denominator, because if denominator is not the same, I'll just bring them to common denominator. So let me forget about this particular case, and I will use the case when denominator is the same. Let's say u over w less than v over w, and I would like to prove from this that a to the power of u over w is less than a to the power v over w. So now I'm using the same w as, as denominator. Now, how can I prove this? You see, this means that u is less than v, right? They're all positive. We have already agreed that these are rational numbers with natural um, uh, nominators and numerator and, and denominators. So obviously, since the denominator is the same, my numerators must be of the same relationship. Therefore, since I have already proven it for integer positive numbers, for natural numbers, a to the power of u is less than a to the power of v for greater than 1 base a. Now, all I have to do now is extract the w's root from it, right? Because a to the power u over w is w's root from a to the power of u. And a to the power of v over w is, again, w's, the same w's root of a, the power of v. Now, 
if a to the power of u and a to the power of v are of this particular relation, then their w's roots also should be in exactly the same relation. Because if it's otherwise, then by multiplying greater number, the same number of the same w number of times, I will get greater number. So that's why the roots are supposed to be also in the same relation as as a, a to the power of u and a to the power of v cannot be otherwise. If it's otherwise, I will just um, raise both in in w's power, and I will have a reverse uh, equation here. So I've proved it for real, uh, ra uh, rational numbers as well. Fine. Now, these are all positive numbers. I was only talking about positive numbers and prove that. How can I prove it for negative numbers? Again, let's start from integers. Negative integer numbers. Let's say I have minus m. Well, let's first do this. This is minus m, and this is minus n. So minus m is less than minus n. Now, m and n are positive numbers. That's why I put minus in front of them. M and n, m and n are natural numbers. And since this one is to the left, uh, from, the, from this one, this is the relationship. I would like to prove that a to the power minus m is less than a to the power of minus m. Now, how can I prove that? Well, very easily. Um, now, if minus m less than minus n, then m, the positive corresponding positive, which is basically distance from zero, is greater than m. Therefore, from the previous, um, case when both are integers, if this greater than this, then a to the m is greater than a to the n. Now, what is this? This is 1 over a to the m. And what is this? It's 1 over a to the power of m. Now, if denominators are in this relationship, then the whole fractions are in the opposite uh, a relation, right? Because if denominator is greater with the same numerator, then the fraction is smaller, and vice versa. Okay, so basically that's what we have just proved. Which means that the same uh, monotonic property exists for negative um, integers as well. Now, absolutely the same way you go to the negative rational numbers and if you have a mixture of negative and positive argument it's even uh, easier because we know that for greater than one base everything to the right of the zero is greater than one and everything to the left of the zero is smaller than one which means we still have exactly the same type of relationship between the values of the exponential function okay now, the case with a less than 1, I will not consider at all, because, again, it's quite obvious from the fact that uh, if a is, great, if is less than 1, then 1 over a is greater than 1. So all the properties of this case are true for this case, just reversing the sign of the exponent. Whatever was true for positive exponent here will be true for negative here, and vice versa. So that's why I'm not going to waste any time on this. That's obvious. Next property. So monotonicity to be proved now. OK. We have to prove that a to the power of x for a greater than 1 increases to plus infinity if 
x goes to plus infinity. Okay. Let me say it again. <laughs> I'm using some symbolics here. So for this function, well, function is already written here, so we don't have to think here. If um, base is greater than 1, if base is greater than 1, therefore y goes up to plus infinity when x goes to plus infinity. So it's not only monotonically increasing, but it's increasing to infinity. How to prove it? Very easy. We actually did something very useful. You remember, I've proven this just before, a couple of minutes before. For a greater than 1, if you are raising it to the power of n, you will get the value greater than this one. Now, how can I prove that this thing goes to infinity uh, with increasing uh, exponent n? Well, very easy. Let's choose any number n. And now I'm going to find such a number, lowercase n, that this thing exceeds this one. How? Well, let me choose the number n that this thing exceeds n. Now, when will this be, will be greater than n? Well, obviously, if uh, if n would be greater than n minus 1 divided by a, right? Minus 1 divided by a. So, as long as I choose any integer number n greater than this number, then 1 plus n a would be greater than n, and a to the nth power will be even greater. So it will exceed the number n. So for any number n, I can find lowercase n such that a to the power of lowercase n will exceed it, which means that for any level, I eventually will find the point where a to the power of n will exceed it. So that's actually, that is actually the meaning of the statement that a to the power of x goes to infinity. <clears throat> At least we have uh, proved this thing for all integers. So I can find an integer where, where it goes um, above certain level. But now let's think about the rational numbers. Since I have already proved that the function is monotonically increasing, once I found one particular point, let's say it's an integer lowercase n, where we have exceeded this uppercase n, then everything above that would be even higher. So that's what actually is a proof that the function goes to plus infinity. It's monotonic, and it can exceed any however large chosen um, number n. So what we have just proven is that for greater than one uh, base, the function goes to plus infinity um, when the exponent increases to plus infinity. Now, how about, how about the next um, my statement? Well, this is not a straight line, I'm sorry. Now, my next statement is that when I go to the minus infinity, when argument goes to negative infinity, then the function goes to zero. Well, this is actually quite obvious. Why? Because for negative number uh, x, for negative number x, I have this particular equation, right? This is the definition of negative exponent. So if a to the nth power, n is a na na natural number. So if um, a is a to the nth power goes to plus infinity, then 1 over a to the nth power goes to 0, right? 1 divided by 
a large denominator gives you a smaller uh, fraction. And as soon as we understand that in this particular um, uh, fraction, the denominator goes to positive infinity, we saw that the whole fraction goes to positive zero. Okay, fine. So I've got it for negative rational numbers, uh, for, for negative integer numbers. So for negative rational numbers, it's obviously following from the fact that the function is monotonic. Okay. Next. Ah, uh, okay. So we were actually comparing the values of the function based on different values of the exponent x. Now I would like to compare how the functions look if we are changing the base. Base is not really an argument, but it would be interesting to find out how this function is different from this function. So my statement is that the bigger this particular uh, base of exponential function for, let's talk about this case. So the bigger the base, the steeper the function goes up. This is 2 to the power of x. And this is 3 to the power of x. So, the bigger the base, the steeper it goes up to the right, and faster it goes to zero to the left. Now, with opposite a less than one, we will have a similar kind of a uh, relationship, but we will talk about this later. So right now, let me prove the following. That for a and b greater than 1, if a greater than b, then so if a greater than b, then a to the power of x is greater then b to the power of x for x positive, and a to the power of x is less than b to the power of x if x is negative. Right? So if this base is greater than this one, then for positive exp exponents, this graph is above this graph. But for negative exponents, this graph is below this graph. All right, how can I prove it? The same story is repeating again and again. First of all, let's prove it for natural uh, exponent. So a to the n greater than b to the n. Natural are obviously greater than 0. How to prove that? Well, if a is greater than b, then whenever we multiply n times a, obviously each component of this multiplication would be greater than each component of that multiplication, and that's why the result would be greater. Now, from this, we expand it to rational, positive rational numbers, because a to the power of p over q greater than b to the power of p over q, because this is equal to q's root of a to the power of p, and this is q's root of b to the power of p. If this is greater than this, then q's root should be also greater, and that's what this is. is. All right, so we proved it for positive numbers. Now, how to prove, well, the opposite relationship to the negative numbers? 
very easily, again, considering that for negative, for negative x, let me put a to the power of x for negative x, I will put it as minus absolute value of x. And this is b to the minus negative absolute value of x. That's what negative actually exponent means. So if x is equal to minus 2, its absolute value is 2, and that is minus 2. That's the same, same thing here. Now, this is equal to a to the power of x. This is equal to, sorry, this is equal to 1 over a to the power of absolute value of x. This is equal to b over to the power of x. Now, absolute value of x is a positive, so this denominator is greater than this denominator because we have just proven it. But if we took inverse, we will have an inverse uh, relation between them. So if this denominator greater, then the fraction would be smaller. So that's how we have proven this one. Now, so basically what we have done here, we have proven that in these two cases, when both of them are greater than 1, then the graph both are increasing to infinity in this case, and uh, both decreasing to 0 for x less than 0, but one function would be above another to the right of 0, and would be below to the left of 0. Now, what if a and b are less than 1? Well, the situation is absolutely symmetrical. Let me just write it down, and I will just leave the proof to you. So if a is less than 1 and b is less than 1, let's say 1 half and 1 third, well, basically, the story should be exactly the same, but opposite. So if this is uh, the graph, this is, let's say, 1 half to the power of x. Now, if you have 1 third, then it should be 1 third to the power of x. Now, since my denominator is greater, then it goes down to 0 faster. 1 half times 1 half times 1 half would be above 1 third times 1 third times 1 third. And on the left side, it would be exactly opposite. So we, we can actually do the following. Um, so the function a to the power of x would be less than b to the power of x for um, x. Yes, and a less than b. Okay, so if a less than b, then the value of a would be, of a, a to the power of x would be smaller for negative, and it would be bigger for positive. Let me check. The graph I know is correct. So if a less than b, so a is one third, and b is one half. So one third. No. Yes, yes, yes. A is one third. B is one half. No, it looks like I just mixed it. One third. One half. 1 third to the power of x is smaller for positive x. I'm sorry, for positive x. And this is for negative x. Right. It should be an opposite. Right. Okay. So basically, this is exactly equivalent to the previous case, and the proof is based on the fact that if a is less than 1, then 1 over a is greater than 1, and 1 over b is greater than 1. 
And that's why we can use the previous theorem uh, for 1 over a and 1 over b. So if a is less than 1, then 1 over a is greater than 1 over b, right? And therefore, 1 over a in the power of x would be greater than 1 over b to the power of x or positive x. And that's what actually uh, gives an opposite uh, equation for denominators of these two uh, members. And same thing with this one. All right. Is that it? Yes. So, again, if base is uh, greater than 1, then the graph looks like then the graph looks like this and this. This two would be 2 to the power of x, this will be 3 to the power of x. The greater the base, the higher it is for the positive x and the lower it is uh, with the negative. Now, if base is less than 1, then situation is kind of an opposite. So, keep in mind these graphs. I think that um, all the properties of which I was talking today uh, are the foundation for these graphs. Now, I will explain in more details um, the story about graphs in the next lecture. So this one was just an illustration, graphical illustration of all these properties. But again, the purpose of the properties is actually to draw nice graphs. Um, monotonicity, uh, greater than one or less than one based on the value of uh, argument and the value of the base. So all these properties are very important uh, and they're all based on the most important property of all uh, exponential function, which is this. Okay, that's it for today. Again, next lecture would be about graphs. I do suggest you to take a look at the notes to this lecture, which are accompanying the lecture on the unisor.com website. And uh, I will also um, offer some exercises, problems, and exams. Uh, for those who are registered, you're welcome to take exams as many times as you want. And I would also like to encourage the parents to basically be supervisors uh, for your students um, and uh, unisor.com actually allows you to uh, register as a supervisor and then you will be able to control the whole educational process of your students. That's it, thank you very much.